there, there's been a lot of misinformation about what a partnership with MNN would constitute. It would not, 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 not be a lease. It would be a contractual relationship in which both parties agree to the terms of the contract. Both parties must agree to the terms of the contract. It would provide WBAI with state-of-the-art studios. It would provide us with producers. It would provide us with a TV channel. It would provide us with help in fundraising, off-air fundraising, which we desperately need. At this moment, we are faced with a 3.2 million plus interest debt hanging over Pacifica and no plan to repay it. We don't do those million dollar fundraisers anymore. Um, there are, I sometimes think there are people who would rather see the radio station die than that it form a partnership with some other entity where maybe they wouldn't have as much control. So we're, so we're looking at, you know, to some extent we're looking at control issues out of control when we talk about, about a partnership where we need at least to explore it, not reject it out of hand, not mischaracterize it, not lie about it. We need to be truthful about it. What exactly would it be? And the people who claim that it is things that it is not should inform themselves, check it out, find out what it really is, and then we can all decide together. But we need to be able to agree seconds. about basically factual stuff that can be corroborated, that can be checked. If we don't agree about the basic facts, we cannot have an intelligent conversation. So at least exploration. We should be exploring that possibility because I am not sure that this radio station will survive unless it gets tucked under the wing or, the, or, or, or forms a partnership of some kind with another entity, and particularly one time. With, with the resources that MNN has. Resource. Thank you. We move on to James Bryan. Yeah, just, um, just in terms of um, BAI's current status, just related to the prior question. to get out of the conundrum of diminishing returns from the aging out listenership. We, partnership is, is essential. I, I, I don't see any, any way around it. But I'm going to go a different way with this. I just want to suggest maybe a couple of analogies. Just following up on, on Roger's points about just fairly characterizing this, this situation. And um, she, she's a little more knowledgeable. I've done my due diligence to look into it. But let's look at a couple of other situations. Just very recently, we had, I'm, an, I'm African American descent. We had a reparations issue brought up in national politics. It was originally just a um, just something that, that uh, um, the, the original bill wasn't it was just exploratory or something in nature and now it's an actual research bill. That's very different than the right wing talking points that were castigated. So now it can go to committees, it can be it can be properly evaluated. Likewise I would say that, that Manhattan neighborhood network issue needs to be properly evaluated, it needs to go to particular committees, it needs to be assessed. That's how things work realistically. And I dare say, even in progressive politics, I have relatives who are in, live in Pennsylvania, um, through marriage and live in Pennsylvania. If I heard char them characterize the Green New Deal and saying that it's going to kill their coal country, and what, I would vigorously oppose that kind of limited thinking and, and look to inform the situation. That kind of right wing talking points cannot carry the day. It's, and if, if we are going to be in coalition in progressive politics, Time. that cannot be the process that we carry, uh, we, we, we utilize. Thank you. Next candidate, Jim Dingman. Okay. Uh, I feel we should cooperate with all institutions, all community TV uh, entities in the tri state area. Uh, journalism schools, universities, high schools, we need as much support as we can get to help us survive. Now in terms of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, uh, I as the chair of the Community Advisory Board invited Mr. Coughlin when I was chair to come down and speak and he didn't do that. Uh, instead, I, we had the person from WFMU come and what was the first thing out of his mouth? He said to us, you know, I'm going to basically throw everything off the air and I'm like only retain 10% of it, and why would you guys even be having us come down here because I'm going to change everything. Uh, and uh, Mr. Coughlin 
of course, and let's just say these things. Uh, some of us consider that he was responsible for negotiating the very onerous per state building contract uh, that, uh, that then, of course, Ambrose Lane, who died, signed. And again, maybe they thought that everything was be, going to be honky dory and they were going to be able to expand and grow their uh, fundraising. But unfortunately, it collapsed. And it collapsed not only for BAI, it collapsed for public broadcasting in general. So we were stuck with a situation where if we had to still pay the rent right now, it would be 80000 a month. Now, the negotiation that we got out of Empire State Building, uh, basically, we saved $1.9 million. They wanted to hit us with another $1.9 million on top of the $3.7 million, and we would have had to pay that. 30 seconds. So uh, I think that uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, uh, yeah, let's go work up there and use their studios. Let's use all the studios right now to help us try to survive. But the issue of moving them over there, I personally think, is basically handing a $50 million asset, which is what WBAI is, into a situation where a public service operating agreement can essentially take control of it down the road, and that's what happens in the majority of the cases that anyone has studied ever since these Aye. methods were introduced into public broadcasting. Thank you. Our next candidate is Sophia Albiaki. partnership that feels very much, there is everything in New York is, boils down to a public-private partnership, unfortunately, and this feels very much like it's, it resembles that, and that's why uh, we have grave concerns about Manhattan Neighborhood Network um, and its, its relationship. It's already been determined by the Supreme Court that it is a private institution where First Amendment protections are not um, uh, applicable. Um, and censorship questions are a major issue. I think if we want, and I totally support making sure the BAI is a union shop, uh, uh, that will be harder, with, a, with I, I believe, with a partnership uh, 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 with m and uh, given that, you know, just remembering the sort of spectrum strike that happened uh, a couple of years ago the, of spectrum workers, that kind of strike, its coverage, its support, uh, 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 it would be, uh, on, on BAI would be undermined by in this kind of a relationship. And I don't think that, I think we should use other studios. I don't think that we should make it take it upon ourselves uh, 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 to have those terms of agreement determined by how much control MNN has on on BAI and in that kind of partnership. I think studio rentals should be something we should explore, but it shouldn't be contingent on having it um, <coughs> potentially down the road to be able to take over. I think we haven't tried every option yet. Uh, as, as we were saying before, uh, obviously the medium has changed uh, uh, radically, and uh, there is a, uh, most people who are hungry for independent listener-supported media are right now not necessarily investing in terrestrial radio. We need to change that, uh, uh, that dynamic. That, that option hasn't been explored yet, and we should try it. That, uh, I think. Thank you. And our next um, candidate is Jack Devine. As also a member of the Red Wave Slate and a member of the Democratic Socialists of America, something that is really important to me and that is so lacking in our society is democratic control, small d democratic control of our institutions. And that is one of the unique and great things about BAI. M and N is not a democratically run or controlled institution. It is a private institution that does not have an elected board of directors. Its directors are chosen from the top on down. So we would be liquidating one of the small remnants of democracy in this city for working people. And I think we should be fighting and not just critiquing this plan. And I understand why people support it. People love this station. They want it to survive and last. And this looks like an opportunity to at least inject some um, funds into the institution so it can survive. But it's not worth surviving if you're destroying the character of what makes it unique in the first place. And so I think we need to be thinking about what are the alternatives and not utopian ideas. What is happening in the material reality of media? Where is the actual development of these grassroots media worker-owned institutions and working alongside of them? And these institutions are, some of them, some podcasts bring in more money every month than the AI does. And that's just one production. 
So we coordinate with these groups that are already successful, including these publishers like Verso, that is growing dramatically, and developing a relationship with them that is mutually beneficial. And also, if we look at the small dollar funded political campaigns that have been going on, they've been very successful in bringing in what was recently considered ideas that were beyond the pale into the mainstream if we, and are actually winning races across the country. If we take a look at those models, how these small dollar models and these small democratic worker fund right. institutions are being uh, funded, that's where we can actually save the station and save the original goal of what the station is supposed to be. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate is Sharon Salam. Well, the reality is we're not in favor of going to Manhattan Neighborhood Network either. But I want someone around this table to tell me if we don't make some sort of commitment to do something, how are we going to pay our bills? If we owe millions of dollars in debt and we go to an entity that, where we uh, can set up our own contract, and determine the time, the this, the that, and the other. It's like a, a business deal. And one of the things that most people don't realize uh, in going to uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network is that during the time of this business deal, Manhattan Neighborhood Network would pay the bills going forward during the duration of this period of the contract. <coughs> At the end of the contract, we would be hoping that those amongst us at WBAI who have this ballooning debt that they would not pay would be able to fundraise and do other types of activities to get that debt down without having to pay other debt. Right now, we still have to pay for the antenna. We still have to pay rent. We still have to pay salaries. We still have to pay so many other things, including this ballooning debt. We need a breather so that we can, for one minute, pay the ballooning debt and someone else take on this other responsibility so that the debt does not continue to go higher and higher and higher. We need to be able to figure our way out. That 30 million, uh, how much million did 3. you say? 3.2 3. million dollars that is ballooning every day Time. is not going to disappear. And I really don't believe that those people who lent us that money are going to walk in and say, we forgive your loan. They're going to want that station. And they're going to want it with or without a contract. Right. Time. And we have to decide right now uh, soon, what we are going to do to make sure it doesn't happen. Hi. Okay. Um, William Harawagon has departed, so our next candidate is John Brinkley. Uh, there are no silver bullets. Um, we need to go through a process of planning, of looking at a lot of different options in order to deal with uh, debt, uh, 3.2 million has been put out there. And one thing, those who have uh, been involved in securing the debt to get us out of uh, the uh, Empire State and over to the World Trade, uh, haven't come up with a plan on how to pay that debt. So they did half the job, which is unfortunate. So now we're stuck with the situation where uh, we need to do planning. We need to look at all options. There are so many uh, positive things and maybe some negative things associated with uh, partnering with MNN. But you have to look at the total picture, where you are, what you need to do in order to get to where you want to, uh, want to be. So again, there are no silver bullets. It will not solve all the issues. But you need to go through the process of looking what the, where you are now. What the, some ideas have been put out that are worthy to be looked at. But we need a functional board that meets, that assigns uh, 
uh, folks to committees that, that do the research and come out with the cold, hard facts of, of, of what's involved. And um, uh, we just need to, uh, we need to be functional, uh, we need to be open-minded, we need to do the research, and we need to make decisions. <coughs> and uh, that, that is my position. I'm not uh, ruling out anything, but I'm look, uh, willing to look at um, uh, different information and make, make a, uh, an intelligent decision. Thank you. Next candidate, James Sockerton. Hi, James Sockerton again, an independent candidate for the MSB. Speak up. The eminent issue is, um, has been a divisive one. Um, the first thing I would ask is where is MNN's proposal? The suggestion that we partner with MNN is a totally amorphous thing. It can be shaped and, and formed to supply answers to every question and to please every person. But in fact, we have no actual proposal from MNN. There was a proposal some years ago. We don't have a current proposal from MNN. So we don't even know what's being offered or what's being discussed. Dan Coughlin, in two public forums, has said that if he takes over WBAI through a public service operating agreement, which is what it would be, he would totally control the content of our air. That may mean that some of the people who are currently on the air would, have, would be able to maintain their programs. Some of the people who were uh, members of his group when he was the executive director of Pacifica, um, who think that he's their friend and that he would maintain their programming, uh, that may or may not be true. He's going to take over our content. In other words, WBI will disappear. The public service operating agreement lasts typically for five to seven years. What's going to happen to our audience in that time period? Our audience will disappear. Our audience will be gone. So if you go into one of these agreements, it's essentially goodbye WBAI, hello, a new thing, which, as has been pointed out, is allied with the most conservative side of the Supreme Court, Judge Kavanaugh and others who sided with MNN in their Supreme Court case, declaring them to be a private entity rather than a public entity created by the government of New York. Uh, it's, it, it just could be fraught with difficulty. Thanks for taking our questions last, from the public. Our last Bye, candidate, candidate, please. Bye, Mario. I'm leaving. And I'm not coming back. Excuse me, you're interrupting. And I'm not coming back to any more of these. Please leave. Please leave. I told you I'm leaving. I, you don't, I don't need your I need, I need quiet so that we can... I, I need to finish. There's only five public people from the public here. We don't know how long you're going with questions. Where are we going? Until 6 o'clock? When are you going to take public comment? That's why the station's in trouble. Thank you, Mary. Our last candidate and for your question is Jack Thomas. Everybody take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Try to spend a moment or two just collecting your own thoughts. I don't like what other people are kind of walking my mind with their dirty feet. Mario called me up a lot of times, tried to tell me all sorts of things about the radio station, came to many cab meetings, and unfortunately that's the problem we have in this whole country and this whole world. Thank you. My name is Jack DePalmer. I'm running for the listener. Uh, position on the uh, LSB. Uh, I, I tried to. Uh, wrong page. Excuse me. Okay. Democracy with a small D. That's what's missing in many, many, many things in this country repeatedly. When I first got involved with listening to Pacifica Waves, it was Summer Reese who actually was taken out of the executive director position. I felt that she deserved due process. She was asking for audits. She didn't get due process and she didn't make, keep her job. As you said, uh, Jack, uh, public-private partnerships lead to real problems, especially for the people with the least resources, because we'll be dependent upon them to write the contract. Cable television, MNN, Democracy Now! are private entities outside the scope of what we control. Small Democracy D. Uh, I'm reading an excellent book about unionism, uh, the uh, history of uh, the United States in Ten Strikes, and they mention the Wobblies. The Wobblies had a problem because every time they were trying to speak the truth, free speech, they were removed 
They were shot in the back. They were lynched. They were shut down. And the Wobblies believe that they should be seconds. egalitarian, meaning black, white, ethnic, religious, equality on the job. In the unions, of course. Not all the unions believe that. Any relationship between disequal players will become harmful to the less player. So we have to be very aware about how we can buddy up with universities, booksellers, book writers, community people, local politicians. Get them on our ear. Let's listen to what they have to say. And at the end of the day, you Nine. decide what you want to do. Thank you. All right. Um, do our candidates have stamina for a question about technology? All right. If, if so, um, Good question. How many more questions do you have? I have lots of questions, but I think we're running out of time. So yeah, we I are. ask, do you have stamina for a question on technology? We don't have I have much uh, stamina for a question from the public. Don't do that. Do you have a question for it? Um, um, we're, um, no, we're not doing a question for the public. Why not? Why not? Because we have some questions that are valuable that you Who developed these questions? Um, there are a whole stack of them to go over there. Who developed the questions? The questions were developed by the National Election Supervisor in two days. So it comes from the NES. And then there are other questions that, that, that everyone's familiar with those questions. And there are other additional questions that they've done. Uh, so Passive voice by the I did them and other people did them. In fact, I asked well, people to contribute. And so nobody did actually. Contribute. Nobody actually came. I asked the LSP to contribute. Better come to a meeting. Well, because you were in your bubble. No, I'm not right. I wouldn't say my bubble. Well, uh, Look at here. Well, we we okay. said we're a community. Those who uh, would like to participate, I will move we're on to the next question. We don't, we don't we have, have community uh, here. If you, Why if you, not deal if you with like, the folks if you, who are if here? If you don't like this question, pose another question to yourself and answer it. But I will <laughs> ask a question about the Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You guys we were took a vote. We, we will take, it we're not taking a vote. We're not taking a vote. No, 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 one, no one's been process. elected. You Speaking don't have to participate. Speaking of private operators. We took so, a vote. This is most outrageous. No, 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 no. So, All this talk about small D democracy. We took a vote. Yeah. yeah. We took a vote stuff. to take she questions. She brought it up and I repeated it. You didn't even we're say it. We're running out of time. So, here is the question for those who have stamina. Yes, I did. As can be, all right, excuse me. As can be seen from the mission statement, WBAI and its sister radio stations were envisioned as terrestrial radio stations at the time the statement was written. Obviously, there's been a lot of technological change since that time. One thing that has happened is there's high-definition radio, something that WBAI has not adopted yet, only one of its sister stations has. The more obvious technological changes that have occurred have been with respect to the Internet. People talk about the convergence. So what goes on the Internet is radio isn't just radio, it's frequently video as well, and then there's text and images. What and do you see as the technological future to work towards with respect to WBAI station? And as fodder, I will throw in that uh, recent news reports that there is a executive order drafted at the White House to give FCC Commissioner Ajak Pai authority to censor the internet. And I will also point out that with technological changes, we have programming on WBAI, such as Democracy Now!, that has become untethered from the station, where funds are now flowing to programs like Democracy Now!, independently, and instead of WBAI. So we will start, um, in this case, with uh, Jack De Palma and work backwards. Whoa. I didn't expect it first. Okay. As you said, I could pose my own question. The real professionals on the radio station deserve union representation. That's why they're real professionals. They have their jobs because they have skills. They're radio engineers. They're radio professionals. We have to trust those people. Real property secures our loans. That's why if we had our audits done, we could actually borrow again on real property. That's how loans work in America. 
especially when you pay a low rate. But we are paying a high rate because we don't have audits, we don't have financial responsibility at our radio station. The antenna, the salaries, and volunteer service can save our community. The problem is our community is constantly fighting over giving it over to some wealthy person. What can we do with our radio station? I believe terrestrial radio station will survive when other things fail. We saw it before. I came down here four days after Sandy hit this neighborhood, and I saw what happened on this neighborhood. But notice two things. The stock exchange was running, and Verizon was running. We have no choice but to pay for Verizon. We don't have to buy stock in their dream. Your dream is not their dream. Our radio station gave justice to people that were railroaded by the police in this town. I think you know what I'm talking about. And if we keep going along with the idea that MNN is going to give us something that we already own, we already can pay for, and we can actually, like I said, real property secures our loan. Real property in Berkeley, California. Real property in LA. If we're so silly to think that someone's going to give us money because we can't understand that we have the resources. Seconds. Tony Banks, during Occupy Wall Street, told me on a train station on the IRT, IRT line that this radio station is estimated to be worth $50 million dollars in real money. The problem is the New York Times, radio stations, even the TV stations, they're going downhill because you need a fantasy leader in a country full of fantasy believers. Nice. We got the real stuff. Thank we you. better not lose it. Our next candidate is James Sargent. Okay, uh, the question was technology and how we can implement use of modern technology to help our radio station to survive. Again, survival really is the issue at this time. Implementing technology we've lagged in, and if we had done better with it, we would have been further along with it by now. But we need to clearly move ahead at the same time. We need to be improving our programming. We need to be expanding the use of technology which would give us more outlets for programming. We could have, we could use our sidebands, which are um, aspects of our radio signal that create small uh, areas uh, on the bandwidth where we could have other kinds of programming. We could have WBI 1, 2, and 3, WBI Music, WBI Jazz, WBI Blues, WBI Politics of any dimension, all on the internet. We need to proceed with those things. It is difficult to do when we're in such a financial crunch. We did borrow money to get us out of the Empire State Building lease. We saved $2 million on the Empire State Building, but we had to borrow the money to get out of the lease. But it still saved us $2 million. If we hadn't taken that loan, we would now be out of business. We'd be bankrupt. So yes, we took a loan. Yes, it was risky. But we have to try and preserve our independence. And that's really the issue. We are free speech, independent radio. We don't, we're not owned by anybody, we're not controlled by anybody. We actually have free speech, which accounts for the prolific cornucopia of viewpoints and people, the diversity that we have on our radio station. And we have to preserve that. I'm James Sagerton running for the LSB. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next candidate is John Brinkley. If you're not satisfied with the question, John, go ahead and ask your own question. <laughs> These guys are wearing me out because they, uh, they, they come up with information that is, let me put it this way. Uh, we took on a $3.0 million debt. It solved some problems. And unless we do some planning, which they are, have not put together any plan on how to pay back the $3.2 million, we're going to be in a worse situation. And as this gentleman to my left said, and he's echoing, echoing uh, Steve Brown, who said, the network, BAI, and all the other stations are worth premium money. We should sell it now. This is Steve Brown. We should, we should sell it now while it is at its peak. 
and do something else. This is Steve Brown, the head of ACE. Also, uh, the folks who would benefit, they talk about uh, MNN. And MNN would allow us to get into a lot of the technology that we're, we're speaking to, the podcast, the TV, and other, with the training, with the resources, and so on. We need to look at that. Uh, as, it stands, as it stands now, the $3.2 million, uh, we, have a, we have a couple of millionaires who will be willing to, if we default on their debt because they haven't come up with any plan, they would then be in a position to take over the station. We're in more jeopardy from these folks taking over the station than we are with MNN, where you can write a contract and saying we don't have the resources, we have plenty of resources who would allow us to write a fair contract so that we're not, uh, we're not held up uh, uh, to something that we can't fulfill and that would jeopardize the station. We need to keep an eye on the ball. What is the real threat? What is the real opportunity? Thank you. Uh, William Harawagon departed, so we have Sharon Salam. Well, let me tell all of you out there in radio land uh, who's going to be listening to this message. I am not a mechanical person who knows all these fancy stuff. All I know is how to receive and respond to messages that I get. So you're the wrong person to ask when you're talking about technology. But I am willing to learn and I'm willing to help. Now, one of the things that we did in terms of the financing, we did come up with a uh, proposal uh, that was put on the table, a fundraising proposal that was put on the table and has not been used yet but it's on the table. This really brings us back to what I have said previously, and this is from the mouth of Sharon Salam. We have to figure out how to work together. One group is not gonna be able to do it on their own. The station belongs to all of us. And if you don't like the plan that we at Justice and Unity put on the table, come up with your own plan. We put up a couple of them. Come seconds. up with your own plan. <coughs> We're willing to work a plan if we can see one. Put it on the table and stop all the fancy talk. Because in the end, the fancy talk is not going to pay our ticket to the dance. Come up with issues and ideas that work. Thank you, and uh, Jack Devine is next. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, not all young people are experts in technology, and I'm definitely not someone who can get into <laughs> to the, the, inner, uh, the inner details of how all this will work. But if, uh, if from an aesthetic perspective, um, the website definitely needs to be um, redesigned and remodeled. It looks like something that I would go on the computer uh, at my house in 1997. Uh, so there, <laughs> there's definitely a need to update there. Um, I think expanding streams into social media is really key, and connecting also the programs with big social media personalities that share the perspective and the mission of WBAI is something that we really need to be doing. Um, working with video streaming and a lot of these technologies I, I don't know how they the inner workings of them but I do know that they are often actually not that expensive and that there are a lot of ways that we can build relationships with institutions that share our mission or goal that they're uh, growing right now and that have areas of expertise in this area there's a lot of like I've been talking about media workers organizing there's a lot of tech workers who are organizing and committed to uh, building working class institutions and they would be very interested in helping WBAI take the next step in this direction and in Pacifica as a whole. And I, so I think it's really important that we do integrate um, uh, BAI with new technologies that are developed on the internet 
Um, 30 seconds. And in terms of uh, streaming capabilities, because that's the only way that the station is can continue to have a presence long term, because that's how most people access content these days, and increasingly so. That doesn't mean that we should abandon terrestrial. Terrestrial and the internet should be working in a mutually beneficial relationship to further expand, connect uh, disparate demographics into like a, a collective um, listening group that is really a, a membership that is uh, democratic in terms of producers and its listeners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Sophia Albiano. Yeah, I really recommend that people check out um, this, this San Francisco uh, internet community radio station called Best Frequencies FM. Uh, it's a gorgeously done website, actually, and it's something that I think we can look at when we're saying we want a website that looks like exactly what community radio is attractive, something that you want to listen to all the time, um, that is still connected to terrestrial. I think the question of censorship is going to get even more and more urgent, and um, uh, you know, as, as we see there is authoritarian governments around the world, uh, we should take it as a responsibility. The BAI continues the, uh, uh, to function, uh, and this, this is a state of mission. Um, you know, I don't have, there is no quick fix, as people have said here, you know, there has been different ways we've had to fight against privatization on many fronts. There's different ways that it's been done. I will say MNN doesn't have, um, it doesn't have the last word on, on podcasts. Like, we, we are around communities of people who create podcasts that are popular. We know, again, what Jack was saying, media workers are part of groups like Tech Workers Coalition who are organizing against Amazon uh, and, and other, uh, 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 and other you know, uh, uh, software that's used for unethical purposes, that's used to cage children and that's used uh, 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 um, um, to surveil people. These are, these are our, you know, these are our, whatever, these are people uh, who are organizing with us in DSA and outside of it who would want to actually put their technology seconds. skills to use in actually building institutions uh, uh, that, are, that are for the good, and I think that BAI represents that kind of an institution. If we make it a rallying cry and say, this is what technology should be used for, this is what we want to fight for, and not just simply fight against these evil corporations, if we make that the kind of mission and that kind of campaign, I think those are the ways that we, we bring people together to be able to raise uh, enough money to get us out of debt. Uh, I think debt cancellation and, 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 and taking on private uh, corporations is a rallying cry for a lot of people right now. Thank you very much. Jim Dingman. All right. Uh, all the Pacific stations have been back in dinosaur land when it comes to technology. Uh, I remember when I was involved with the Independent Media Center in New York, and I was looking at what they were doing, basically being a broadcasting station to Seattle and innovate from there. Uh, that whole technology has been not integrated into the Pacific Station for a wide variety of reasons. I should add that uh, Ira Glass, who is the person who created Serial, which was at one point the most widely heard podcast in the United States, initially was a member of the news department at WBAI years ago. So where are we getting the talent that can be trained to do things? Now, there were three fundraising um, uh, plans, and they all should be implemented. But I wanted to correct some issues about this unionization issue. I was a member of the old UE local that had both staff and unpaid staff together. And that uh, was destroyed by the previous Pacifica National Board that was overthrown in 2000. And uh, so I th think that should be corrected. Uh, we were actually elected. We had a program council that was elected. And that was before this uh, entity that people are referring to, uh, this unpaid staff meeting. Now, the financial situation is complicated. Uh, Democracy Now! recently uh, basically absolved us from a 2.3 2, 2 to 2.4 million debt. And so that's one positive thing. We got literally uh, almost over a million dollars in bequests in the past couple of months. 30 seconds. 50,000 came to BAI, 400,000 came to uh, 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 KPFK. But we're still left with the problem that people aren't, uh, in short-term fundraising, paying for public and political affairs programming, period. That's true in New York. That's true in uh, KPFK. At PFW and KPFT, they get most of their money from music. So we have to figure out a way to solve that problem. And it just, it, we have to really figure out a way to creatively move uh, ahead of that. 
All right, thank you, uh, James Bryan. Yes, um, thoughts on the matter of, of technology in general, I and mean, then specifically in communications, the, the devil is in the details of it. And then the devil, usually, that we're dealing with is uh, not, not always, but many times, is the FCC. Currently, of course, led by um, the orange man's choice. Uh, honestly, he was put on the board by the prior president. But uh, or, well, um, my, my point is that the, the FCC, when you, it, the, the Communications Act should be a corollary to this, to, to, to uh, um, Pacifica's mission. Because it's an elegant statement. It's a very elegant um, act, just very short in its, in its wording. And it basically establishes the principle that uh, companies making enormous profits have an obligation to compensate the public for the use of, of, the, of, of their resources. It was very simple in radio days, terrestrial air. It's, it's for most people, I mean, um, some, some folks can't understand the environment is on fire, but you know, they, they, it's just too abstract for them. But, it's our public airwaves. They they pay they pay rent for it. Very it's it's becomes very difficult in other areas. So, for instance, right now there's a petition from this FCC to redefine community franchises, community access channels, including Brick Arts, which everyone here decided to sit down and use their air. And now there's reactionary words going around that will endanger all of those franchises. That's unacceptable. We need to be able to advance tangible policies and issues and discuss them. Not have Fox News talking points knocking around here in, 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 the, in the form of debate. Time. And, and, and whatever on forums that, that are fashioned for that purpose. Thank you. Roger Thank you. Um, obviously, WBI needs to move forward technologically, but we don't have the funds. We barely have been able to build out a new studio. I don't even know if that's completed yet. But there was a specific fundraising to build out a new studio with ordinary microphones, board, CD players, whatever else we need in a studio. Microphone. We can barely do that. So this is, to some extent, even talking about all the things we could do with technologies is, uh, uh, it's, it's sad, actually. And, and I think one of the things we really, we really need to face reality. The reality is that we are faced with equally unappetizing possibilities, or one more, whichever is worse, right? It's not a question of there's a happy ending and there's a tragic ending. I'm not particularly in favor of forming a partnership with MNN, but I'm even less in favor of losing the radio station. That debt could be the end of WBAI. It could be the end of Pacifica. Okay, so we have a tragedy and we have another tragedy. We have a choice of tragedies. We don't have a choice between a tragedy and a happy ending. And we have to be smart about the choice that we make. We have to be really smart we have to not make it seconds. a matter of uh, loyalty to a group that has a particular position. We have to be smart. We have to look at all of the possibilities. And it's, it's just as John said, there's, there's no silver bullet. And we have to keep our eye on the ball. We have to look at the reality. And the reality of the situation is if we don't form a partnership with MNN or some other group, that will be the happy ending. It will not be the happy ending. Time. It could be the worst ending. So we need to really be smart about our possibilities. Thank you. Next, David Anderson. Um, I think the new technology question is a very interesting one because it touches the question of uh, transparency, of democracy, of openness, of uh, uh, Using control and so on and so forth, and I, I think it, it's it's a, a transition uh, where we have problems, and I say we as, as the general public, because uh, 
we like things under a certain type of things and we like them the way they were before. And with new technology, it doesn't work like that. It is not structured like that. It doesn't fly. Um, so we cannot stop people and to say whatever they have to say or we can difficulty to, uh, to uh, control the discussion in one way or another. So I think uh, that's where the new technology, because it's, the price is it's almost free in some ways uh, to, to develop new technology. The, the problem is how we can organize and be a, a, a radio station at large and be able to be open to new technology and in the same way uh, um, keeping the direction and uh, the tone we want without being taken over by uh, uh, other entities that we are not interested on or by uh, having uh, discussion that we are not interested. So I think the, the how can we do seconds. it, I think it's, a, it's, it's a go beyond a uh, little bit the structuration of this, the having to discuss how BI is organized and, and how it's developed and what is uh, the vision of the future because I don't think it can be avoided. I just think it has to be done and, and, and it, has to, it has to be serious about it. So um, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, now we can easily cut it, uh, bring it to a close right here. It's uh, about 413 uh, at the moment. Um, on the other hand, I can I do have another question if you want to do take one more. Um, we would stay if the audience, uh, those people who pay for us to have the station, who pay their premiums, yeah, who are our listeners, could ask the question. Sharon, that's a great idea, and I wish you had responded when we sent out an email about that. So, okay, did you, you hear so what I just said? I sent it out to everybody. Okay, no. Did you did. hear what I said? I, heard I am said. not I heard a computer said. person. Yeah, and I'm not a computer either. It was on okay. the air repeatedly. No. This she would occur to you. Well, it was on the air repeatedly that yeah. this would be yeah. out. But, 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 yeah, that's, well, that's, uh, but, you know. Okay. All were invited. I know Mar Marco's question was, do you believe in global warming uh, as, as a man posed uh, <laughs> 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 well, by mankind? Uh, All right, so, do you all have any questions? But I think it might not be valuable. There are people here with questions. I gotta go. With, no. all right. oh, you got to go. You got to go. I got to go too. Let's just cut this short. Uh, if you're not going to let the, you're not going to let. Oh, you have a question for me? Oh, ask it. Yeah. Ran on the you ran you got one. Uh, All right, I'll tell you what. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait one minute. Wait a second. Is this a question for everyone who is a candidate here? No, it's just the heart. All right. Uh, do we want to have a question that only one candidate answers? Yeah, well, when, I, when I answer it, the rest of them might have an answer, too. I'll tell you what. No, it's specifically something. Okay, well, ask your question. I'll tell you what. Ask your question, well, and then I will put out a question. The and the, the yeah, well, everybody has the right to right 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 try to wrap it up like, like that. Last That's time good. you ran for office. Well, yes. Who is that? Yes. Who are you talking to? Uh, Salon. Mrs. Salon? Yes, that's me. And uh, you specified how you and your group has evaluated management. Yes, we have. You never reported a word about what is the outcome of that evaluation. We were deeply interested, we were proud of the fact that you did it, and yet we heard absolutely nothing. And by the way, I'm on the cab, okay. and uh, I would have appreciated having heard something about that. Can you please justify doing that? Yes, I can. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, that's a question and I'll we'll give you a ch chance answer to answer it. it. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a chance to answer it next and then we'll go in order. Okay. Uh, but if candidates uh, would like to, they can answer, oh, yeah. address Anybody that can question answer. in some way or I'll give you an alternative question that you can also choose to answer. Okay. So the uh, Pacific Emissions Statement says that in terms of our news con we should be putting out information that is accurate and objective. The question is, is that currently part of WBAA's brand when it comes to programming, 
should it be, and what should be our brand in terms of building up listenership and listener contribution? Um, and how does that factor in with free speech as an objective of the station? So, for, so uh, uh, we have two questions on, on the table, and uh, Sharon Salam. Okay. Now, to answer your question, when we work on that committee, and when we work on committees like that, where we're dealing with uh, personnel matters, those committees. Uh, how should I say, it's, it's almost like we work in secrecy because it is a personnel issue and we are only supposed to pass that information on to the board. National. In and executive the, session. Yes, national in board. executive session to the national board, to the board and the national board in executive session, which we did. And it is on them to move the issue forward to make decisions as to what it is they're going to do. In the case of what we did on that committee, we passed it on from committee to uh, the board and the national board. When, remember I had mentioned earlier about there was a time period when the people who were in majority stopped coming to meetings? When they came back to the table, after the election, and they were in the majority, they decided that the evaluation was invalid. So it never saw the light so, of day. So it never saw the light of day other than at the board and at the national board. You well, understand? So since no we are there was reason for you to even make the announcement. Oh, yes, the there was, was a reason. The because that was only because nothing and we came of the bathroom. Months. Nobody can hear you when you're away from the speaker. Yes. We worked for months on that committee. I wasn't the only one. It was a committee of uh, five or six people. We worked diligently on that committee. We, uh, we came up with questions. We came up with all kinds of stuff. We had, uh, it was like a 100-page report that was submitted regarding uh, the evaluations that was put forward and the suggestions. 30 seconds. Did so we ask, did our did job. Did you ask the opinion of people like us? Who, yes, we did. Uh, I did not have. We a, sent the stuff out. So, but we you can't be we heard when have to send stuff out, not through ourselves, because we are just an entity within another entity. We don't have access to the members' records or any of that type of stuff. We have to pass it on so that those people who have access can send it to those people. Like your private information I is not for us. You, you understand? I, I hope you all understand yeah. what I'm saying. All right. Yeah. Uh, those are the rules. Oh. Anderson is next. Oh, I'm going to choose uh, your question because I have no... <laughs> can you repeat your question? Uh, I said that the mission statement uh, yeah. uh, calls for news content to be accurate and objective, and how does that fit in with the branding of WBAI as a station, is it reflective of what, uh, our current branding? How should we be branding ourselves and how does that fit in with uh, free speech as an objective? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the, the objective stories of, of the journalist and the press as the time has come to, to move on to that story because we find out that there's no objective news this world has yes, never been and never has, is never will. Uh, everybody has a point of view and develops this news from that point of view. History is made from a certain point of view and for the last thousand of years we are looking at history through violence and, and that's how we develop uh, history and we want to promote violence so we develop an history of violence where human being has been non-violent for uh, most of the history and he has been non-violent at the scale of uh, three by four and if we have uh, uh, information on, on uh, a study which has been made for the 200 years conflict uh, studying all the conflict all over the world and, and, and it's, uh, it will require 3.5 million, 3.5% uh, of the population mobilizing this, themselves to be able to change the situation. 
and uh, will be in the US 12 million people. And I think in uh, Puerto Rico, they show it very clearly, they mobilize themselves and the situation change. So, uh, to go back to the, uh, to the story of uh, uh, WBI and, and the news, I think it has to be very clear what point of view people are bringing and why do they are bringing this point of view and, and, and giving the information from there. And I think it will be easier for people, from listener, to, uh, and people who participate to understand uh, what what the information or what they want to educate people about from that point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Vajra Kilgower. Okay, I'm going to deal with a couple of those, both of those questions. Uh, people who are on an evalu a management evaluation committee have to sign a confidentiality agreement. It's a personnel matter, lawsuits can, can arise from stuff leaking out. Contracts. Uh, people, the, the people themselves who are being evaluated see the evaluation. Uh, staff is asked to weigh in or given questions. Um, but it is it must be kept confidential. That's just basic how things operate. Um, and it is true that there was a management evaluation. There was a fundraising program that was that was passed and begun to be implemented and and all the things that happened during during the year that the meetings were being boycotted by the opposition we had very harmonious meetings a lot got done a lot of work got done and it, very shortly after the other side had the majority somebody brought a motion I don't want to mention any names but I think the initials are Jim Dingman brought a motion <laughs> to um, just uh, erase everything that that we had accomplished without even without even considering because under Robert's rules, you can the, when the when the majority when you have a quorum, then you can consider: Do you want to move forward on, on what was done, or do you want? But without even any consideration, just boom, 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 all wiped out. Um, with regard to the news, I don't know if there's any such thing as objectivity in news coverage, but it oh, is please. our mission to oh, no. it is our mission oh, to no. let people. You know that. Jack, come on, come on, we're all grown-ups here. Um, it, it is, it is somebody was saying, it, it is important to make it clear where we're coming from so that people have some sense. 30 seconds. And uh, it is our mission to cover the news that is otherwise being suppressed, basically. That, but, but we have to be clear that we're going to be factual to the degree that we can, even if we, even if we don't like to say it. Like there were Chris Norton, who would report from El Salvador, had to report that an atrocity had occurred by the left-wing group, and you could hear in his voice how much it pained him to have to say that, but that was the truth. Time. And we need to tell the truth. Thank you. Uh, James Bryan. Yeah, so we're speaking to the um, notion of um, dealing with objectivity in the um, I, I also... Um, subscribe um, the time a little bit with Roger again, um, that it's really a matter of many times the AI is speaking for interests and, popula and um, vulnerable populations that will have no other voice. So the notion that you know, they're not going to cover the other side, the, the, the uh, victimizer, when the victim has that scant um, voice is, is kind of ludicrous to just subjectively balance that out. But I think the um, technology question comes into play as well again here. The question is how, how will we multiply those channels that we can get information out on? Because and when, when many of us you know, had nice um, dark, dark hair and um, you know, maybe <laughs> you know, straighter backs, you could just go up and down the radio dial and get various perspectives and get a fuller understanding of issues. Those voices are not available generally outside of it's one corporate voice after the other on the radio dial. Newspapers disappear. The internet is private actors, people speaking about partnering BAI with um, organizational social media accounts don't seem to have a problem with, with um, tying BAI to, to um, private operators in, in that respect. But hey, it's always different. My side is right, your side, we can always say whatever. I can hope, if there's anybody I can appeal with here that we can do it differently on this board. That's it, that's my final word, James. James Bryan running for um, 
WBAI LSB listener, Justice Unity. I'm proudly associated with Justice and Unity, have been for 10 plus years. Time. Bye. Thank you. Jim Dingman is next. All right. Um, my name is Jim. I uh, encourage everybody to work for the Ace Indy uh, Caucus uh, and also our support of folks in the staff elections. Uh, the issue of management evaluation and program director evaluation, I've been around for like several decades and I've seen that go up and down and it's always in the eyes of the beholder. But I do think it's important to have that in place. Uh, and obviously the issue of news is quite important. There's been a breakdown in every station. The only station that has a functioning news department is KPFA. And be why do they have that? Because they're fiscally the most stable station. Uh, they uh, have a, a large amount of people working in news. And these days, a young person coming up doesn't need to deal with BAI or Pacific Station. There's all these other outlets they have for expression. It, in some ways, we're irrelevant. And so the question there is how do we deal with people who are doing stuff anyway and work with them? Uh, objective news, I don't know, you know, objective news. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of impossible to have uh, objective news. Uh, although I do think news has to be fact-based. There has to be factual uh, and evidence-based reporting. Uh, I used to be, you know, worked in situations where it was three to four sources to verify a controversial issue. And we need to return to that because we have produced in the past out of the station, when we had a functioning news department, people would come work in our news department and go off and work the mainstream. This went on for years. I saw people go down and work at TV stations in, in all throughout the country. As I mentioned, Ira Glass came through once. So we have to get back to that kind of uh, situation, and we have to then have fiscal stability in order to do that. And we need equipment, and I know I'm trying to raise equipment for the news department in order to have them function, but we need that kind of thing going on throughout the whole country, and we have to work with all these people doing stuff right now. Thank you, Sophia. I'll be out. Yeah, um, I think that uh, the mission of BAI should be, again, fact-based, evidence-based journalism. Um, you're seeing across the landscape right now more and more freelance journalists who are some of the best, most dedicated people just struggling to get jobs, putting their lives on the line in very dangerous places. Um, getting a ton of contempt from the person who's in the White House right now. And you're also seeing newspapers and uh, slowly cutting back on uh, fact-checking departments that used to be a ton of fact-checkers um, there. Uh, uh, the, some of the most trusted news outlets have whole fact-checking departments. Um, and that's what produces legitimacy for an organization. That's what gets you to have people who want to dedicate their time is because they know they're around people that they can trust and that they've worked with. And in my, you know, in the, the hope is that we can have that, uh, uh, we can have some of that uh, uh, be what, what BAI uh, uh, stands for, for, pu for, for people in the public eye, uh, that people recognize that as, a, as part of the, the historic mission and the ongoing part of it, um, its, its work. Um, and I think free speech is really, again, defending free speech from corporate influence, the ability to fire somebody for saying the wrong things and censor them, and from government influence as well, the ability to again censor somebody, make them lose their job, spy on them, threaten them, blackmail them, entrap them, the whole nine yards. Um, that's what free speech is about. That, that means also that, you know, I don't think BAI should tolerate 30 seconds. Nazis, for example, on the station. That's just no free speech for, here, for, here. for fascists who advocate genocide. That's not what we mean by free speech. And I think that should be the continued um, mission of, uh, of the station. Uh, going forward, and uh, vote for me, Sophia Beatty. I'm on the Red Wave slate. Okay. Thank you. And now, Jack Devine. Uh, largely echoing a lot of what Sophia just said. Um, I think it, the and really what everyone is saying. Objectivity is something that's really an impossible uh, to come to. It's the reality is that we live in a world that are shaped by human beings and power structures and what is objective normally comes from like the root base of who is controlling things that particular situation. Now on the other hand there are um, things that are clearly lies and I think lies that are often used to sell um, either for profit or for the benefit of 
uh, particular people in power. And that is what we should be avoiding at BAI. I think it, um, I'm not going to name anything specifically, but there are, I think, certain programs on BAI that damage the overall credibility of the radio station to present the news in a seemingly evidence-based, fact-based manner, to be a trustworthy source for working class New Yorkers. And that's what WBI should be, because if you go to the corporate media, you're not going to be hearing the stories from marginalized communities, from working class people. They are peddling corporate propaganda. And then you have the even more extreme version, like something like Fox News, which is peddling not just corporate propaganda, but fascist propaganda. And I think we have to be very clear that we will not allow fascists and Nazis on the air to push their nonsense that is Wait not evidence-based, not fact-based. So I think we do need a, a commitment to a news department, a commitment to evidence-based, fact-based, um, political and social commentary. And I think as a, a primarily left group that I think the evidence and facts are on our side. If you believe in the humanity of every single person and not the social Darwinistic perspective that is pushed by corporate media and by right-wing media. So I think we need to be pushing Sorry. that perspective that radical democracy and working people, their voices need to be centered in the production and dissemination of news. Thank you. And James Sagerton is next. Hi, James Sagerton, again, independent candidate for the LSB. Um, I pretty much want to agree with just about everything everyone just said. Um, and I'm just going to read this last paragraph of the Pacifica mission statement to show how what people have been saying agrees with what our mission is supposed to be. It says, in radio broadcasting operations, to promote the full distribution of public information, to obtain access to sources of news not commonly brought together in the same medium, and to employ such varied sources in the public presentation of accurate, objective, comprehensive news on all matters vitally affecting the community. That's basically what everybody has just been saying. And I couldn't agree with it more. It's what attracted me to Pacifica. We have this unfortunate situation where two different factions of people have pretty much been turning each other into the other. And it's unfortunate. And I just want to take a, a brief moment to say something personal uh, to Vajra. Recently, my aunt passed away. And I had a little breakdown on the air when we were doing a report to the listener, which I didn't expect. I actually cried a little bit. And Vajra came to me afterwards with some very sincere, kind words about her own loss and her own life. And 30 seconds. That's why I, I know that the people who are on the other side are not, it's not that one side or the other is lying or the other side is telling the truth. We have different ways of seeing it and to our, to our, discredit, we turn each other into the other, and we fail to work together. So I, I hope we can go forward. As Vajra said, without each other, we can't do this. We, if we, right now, we're barely making it. If we divide ourselves up and Time. stop supporting the radio station on either any, on any point's part, we'll fail. Thank you. We have one last candidate to answer this question. Um, and uh, after that, we can either conclude or people might, uh, I could give you people uh, either 30 seconds or a minute to uh, make a concluding statement. Uh, our next, our final candidate answering this question is uh, Jack Palma. I can stand up again? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, confusion is very simple. It's change the context confusion. What we have is a failure of objectivity. Not the model of reporting fact. I study enough quantum understandings to understand that easily personal perspectives are not necessarily objective truths. There's a real serious issue nowadays in this country, in the world, and it's been that way for a long time. As I said, my father died of a heart attack because I believe he smoked too many cigarettes. They didn't talk about that when my father died. It took a lot of years, a lot of lawyers, a lot of courts to decide they have no right to control the message about your health. 
You see this with uh, one of the people on the LSB. Mitch Cohen wrote a book about uh, Monsanto. Let's get to the point. This organization that we represent, that we want to represent, that we actually are all part of, is a community with a small d democracy goal. That is the goal that we all share. We have lost forbearance for each other. That's the problem. I could tell you because it happened in my family. It happens all the time. When we don't trust the other person to be honest about what they're saying. We have Bob Henley. We have Richard Wolf, But we don't have enough money. So the problem is we do have to rely on certain people that make money. And I directly want to talk to you, sir. I don't mean to call you out. But the fact of the matter is what I was suggesting is not Steve Brown's dream. These folks also had a problem with Steve Brown's dream. Steve Brown supports the guy that makes 40% of the money for the radio station. So that model, as Martin Luther King said, has to be rejected. If you want democracy and fairness and equality and egalitarianism in this country on the cheap, well, that's what we got. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't like Steve Brown. I don't like people telling what I hear on the radio station has to be double talk and flim flam. I know how to check Bye. out scientific researched information. Medicine and nutrition is not about science, it's about probability. Getting to the bottom line about tobacco, petroleum, money in our media. Thank you very much. All right, it is. Um Almost uh, 4.40, we've lost some of our candidates. I say uh, uh, I think maybe a good way to bring this to a close would be, do people want to uh, make closing statements? We just did. I just did. Or shall we uh, oh, say thank you to all? She's got a right to make a closing statement because she was answering yeah. Ron's question. Uh, well, no, <laughs> I, 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 could, uh, I could quibble with that, but um, um, I wish to say one last thing. Yes, I do. For any of you who hear this message, I'm Sharon Salam. I'm with Justice Unity Campaign. Please vote for our slate. Vote for me and everyone on it. And let's work together to make a difference. Remember, Sharon Salam and the entire Justice Unity slate. 30 seconds. Thank you so much. 30 seconds. All right, I'll tell you what, instead of opening it up to uh, everyone to make a closing statement, would anyone like to make a closing statement for an alternative slate? Uh, I'm recognizing Jim Dingman. Yes, I'll engage the press, press on the truth. Uh, I suggest that everyone vote for the unity, uh, rather, excuse me, uh, the ACE independent slate. Uh, my name is Jim Dingman. Uh, vote for them and vote for the DSA candidates we've supported in the staff election. I want to say that this has been a very productive meeting because at least people were able to talk about some of their differences openly, which they normally don't do, even though we have differences. And I felt that this was worthwhile to actually start to talk about these differences openly and try to handle these uh, perceptions and misperceptions or facts or not facts we have about each other. There are two other debates scheduled, the 8th of September and the 25th of September. We have plenty of time to work it out, have more listeners come, et cetera, uh, and have that happen. Uh, and I look forward to having other candidates come and talk about this. I think it was a very useful thing to have us all start to honestly talk about our differences. Vote for the independent slip. <laughs> no, you were right the first time. Well, I know, Justice I know. It's a Freudian slip. Freudian slip. Justice right. September 8th, 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 
here in New York City and throughout the entire Pacifica network and develop it into a voice for a nexus of worker-owned media cooperatives. Thank you very much. Jack Devine with the Red, uh, Red Wave Slate. Please vote for us. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Wait, Jane? Uh, uh, Excuse me? Words with our, uh, yes, he can, he can respond to me if he wants. Yeah, somebody said something about it. I, I, I think this was a good place to end everything. Yeah, I, I you really can talk think, to me personally if you like. Uh, okay, thank you all, and thank you on behalf of anyone who's yeah, we'll have another one, man. taking the time to uh, listen to this to inform themselves about the WBA election. So thank you all for uh, I mean, just wanted to mark it because we have an opportunity. Remember to vote. You have to vote. No, I think you wanted to make sure for October 15th. Honor before October 15th. And uh, if you have not gotten the ballot, email. You should go to WBAI.